Well, hello and welcome back into Studio B. My name is Jyothi Bainey and this is a next level vinyasa practice called Bolster Bonanza. So as the title implies, you are going to need a bolster or something that would be suitable as a replacement for a bolster. And I really want you to think of the bolster as an extension of your body. So the same way that we move our arms, our legs, and all of our body parts throughout the physical practice, I want you to think of moving the bolster around not as an inconvenience today, but just as another expression of moving the body. And we're going to be using the bolster as an access door to exploring support. What does support feel like in the body? What does it allow us to do? What does it challenge us to do sometimes? Recognizing that welcoming in support doesn't always mean that things become automatically easier, but in fact, sometimes when we have support, we're actually able to explore something or try something that we would not otherwise be able to do. So with all of that said, let's get started on the back in a really supported position. Supta Baddha Konasana, but with your feet on the bolster. So I'm gonna bring the soles of my feet together, knees floating wide, and then coming onto my back, just letting my knees sort of surrender to gravity here. And then a few different options for the arms. You might place them on the lower belly like I am doing here. Just encouraging the body to really land in the practice. If you're curious about exploring a deeper breath, you might bring the arms overhead, noticing how that opens up, allowing breath to come into the apex of the lungs. But knowing this is going to be a more full and complete practice, there will be many times of challenge. And so allowing in these opening moments of ease. Maybe even noticing how this pose feels slightly different by having the elevation of the feet on top of the bolster. Taking one more breath here, landing in the practice. And then take the hands to the outer knees, closing the legs, coming into Pavana Muktasana, draw the knees into the chest, lift the head, nose in between the knees, giving yourself a nice squeeze here. And then keeping the head and the shoulders lifted, interlace the hands behind the head, open up the elbows wide. We'll shift into some core work here as we draw the knees forward over the hips. And we're gonna start doing some bicycles here. So we'll tap the right toes down and forward in front of the bolster and connect right elbow to left knee. And then start switching back and forth, using this bolster as a measure of guiding the toes forward and down. And noticing that my cadence is not super fast here. It's just steady and measured. About 10 more seconds. Feeling that heat building in the core of the body. Three. And then reach the legs up to the ceiling, the arms overhead, point your toes, stretching the tops of the feet, the front of the ankles. And then pull the toes back, lift the heels, flexing the feet, feeling that stretch move into the hamstrings, the backs of the legs. And then we'll bend the knees, roll to one side, and come around to all fours with your hands in front of the bolster, knees behind, and start to flow through a few rounds of cat and cow. And this should feel really nice, just stretching out to the front of the abdomen after that core work. Feeling free to take this into more of a circular, intuitive movement, if that feels good to you. 
And then we're gonna take this into a supported Anahatasana heart melting pose. So I'm gonna walk my knees back slightly, bring my forearms on the bolster. I wanna make sure that my elbows are gonna stay on the bolster as I bring my palms together. And I start to drop my head behind the bolster towards the floor. And then I'm gonna lift my fingertips up to the ceiling, maybe dropping my thumbs back in between my shoulder blades. So I'm getting this deep opening on the other underside of the arms. And again, this slight elevation of the bolster is bringing in an element of support, but also of challenge. Two more breaths here. And then slowly releasing the fingertips forward, lifting the head, rotate that bolster so that it's running the length of the mat, coming into our first Adamukashvanasana, downward facing dog, and maybe your head finds a nice little resting place right on the bolster. So we typically have four points of contact and downward facing dog, and now we have five. And so just noting, how does it feel to have this extra element of support, of grounding? Maybe this encourages a softening across the forehead, the cheeks, the mouth. One more breath here in Adamukha Svanasana. And then lifting the head, walking the feet forward, my feet are gonna kind of travel on either side of the bolster here as I come into a wider legged Uttanasana. And then I'm gonna twist this, taking my right hand in the center of the bolster. Left hand comes onto my low back. Keep my left leg straight, but bend my right knee, revolve around, and elongate my left arm up to the ceiling. And so again, allowing myself to witness, does this feel any different since I've elevated the floor to me a little bit? Does that allow me to access the twist in a different way? Maybe take a half bind here by dropping the left hand behind the low back and finding the right thigh. One more breath. And then really unwinding the arm first, looking down and take a breath or two in this wide Uttanasana, maybe swaying side to side, forward and back. And then we'll take that second side of the twist, placing the left hand in the middle of the bolster, right hand to the low back. My right leg stays firm, my left knee bends, and I start to pivot and revolve the torso to the right, eventually reaching the right arm up to the ceiling. Knowing that I have the option to explore a bind here if that feels accessible without too much strain. And then re-extending the right arm, taking my time to take the twist out of the spine. And then peeking back, make sure that your bolster is in a position that you have the ability to sit on it as we come into supported malasana. So turning the feet out 45 degrees and then starting to bend the knees and drop the pelvis down until it settles on the bolster. And at least for me, this is a really good example of a pose that when I don't have any props can be quite intense. I really feel the work of my ankles, my shins, but having this element of support allows me to soften. I can actually enjoy being here and I can be here longer. We'll take three more breaths in this position that is so decompressing to the low back. And 
And then we're going to start to prepare to move into Surya Namaskaram, the sun salutation portion of the practice. Hands down, lift the seat, fold forward, take your bolster and turn it so that it's facing the short edge at the front of your mat. Heel toe the feet in into a more traditional mountain pose Tadasana position. And we'll take a half lift here. Hands to the bolster, lift up, establish a tabletop spine. Exhale, fold in Uttanasana. Circle sweep the arms out and up. And then sealing that out, palms of the hands together. We'll be moving through three Surya Namaskaram. Let's begin with the first round. Inhale, lengthen the arms. Exhale, bring the palms together. This is position one. Lengthen the arms forward, up and back is two. And then folding over the legs, hands to the bolster, is three. Take your left foot to the back of the mat, lower your left knee down, and widen your right foot out to the right for more of a lizard pose. Hands on the bolster, arms active. And I want you to think of creating a backbending sensation in the upper back here as you bring the energy up and out. Take one more full breath here, starting to build a little bit faster pace in the practice. And then hands come behind the bolster, step back downward facing dog. As you inhale, shift forward to plank pose, and the bolster becomes a reminder of how support systems can remind us of our safety and our boundaries. So as we lower to chaturanga, the shoulders just tap the bolster and then roll over the feet to find upward facing dog. And downward facing dog will, will pause for three breaths. So again, in that chaturanga where we often have the tendency to go too deeply and strain the head of the shoulder, the bolster is there as a supportive boundary, reminding us of how far we can safely go in the shape. Look forward, take your left thumb to your right thumb, step your left foot forward, melt the right knee down, hands come onto the bolster, and find that lizard with that back bending sensation, energy up and out. So unlike me, you're not needing to talk in the practice. So make sure that you're keeping the breath this steady, deep cadence. Hands come behind the bolster, tuck the right toes and lift the knee, and then step forward for Uttanasana. We'll take that half lift, fingertips to the bolster, lifting up, and then dropping back in Uttanasana. Rising all the way up, there might be a back bend at the top to greet you, and then sealing out that first round. Two more rounds, inhale, stand tall. Exhale. Inhale, finding the back bend and the length. Listening carefully here as we stand tall, two options, either coming into Utkatasana chair pose or lowering down into a toe squat and letting the shins rest on the bolster. Hands come to heart center, slide the shoulders back a little bit over the hips. Feeling the balance. Noticing how the support might allow the, ac the balance to be easier to access. Hands to bolster, fold in Uttanasana, and then right foot to the back of the mat, right knee down. Wiggle that left foot out wide, lizard, either repeating hands on the bolster or lowering to forearms for three. Energy is still forward and out, resisting any temptation to look back. One more inhale. And then hands behind the bolster, step it back, downward facing dog. Shift it forward to plank. Notice your safety and security boundary, lower chaturanga. Roll over, upward facing. Downward facing for three. Allowing the breath to be soothing. And then looking forward, right thumb to left thumb, right foot forward. Lower that left knee. Again, either arms straight or lowering to forearms three. 
Eyes staying open, energy is forward and out too. And then we'll transition forward. Left toes tuck and knee lifts, step and fold. Half lift, fingertips to bolster, drop in. Rising up, maybe back bend at the top. Seal it out. Final sun salutation, you got this, inhale. Exhale, palms together, this is one. Two. And then same option here, standing up, either Utkatasana chair pose or lowering with control into your toe squat, shins resting on the bolster. This will come in handy later, trust me. Seeing if we can keep the energy of the practice one of kindness to ourselves, even when we're doing things that are more challenging. Hands to the bolster, lift the seat, fold. Left foot back, left knee down. Now hopefully you have a surface that you can slide on here. So we're gonna take the hands on this bolster, push it away from us and slide out, getting low and long in this lizard pose. Noticing that the bigger you get in the shape, the more you have to stay connected to the core engagement. And then use an exhale to draw the bolster back in and step back, downward facing dog. Well done, everyone. Shift forward to plank. See that safety boundary. Shoulders just tap on the chaturanga. And then roll forward and up, upward facing. Back, three breaths, downward facing. Looking forward, left thumb to right thumb, left foot forward, right knee down. Three options, arms could be straight, forearms down, or push and slide. Pull it on in. Right foot comes forward. Fold in Uttanasana. Take that half lift and fold. Circle sweep and rise. And palms together. We're going to start to shift into a standing sequence here. And the intent of the standing sequence, so I'll let you know straight off the bat, we're going to do it twice. The first time through, we will use the bolster in almost every single shape, exploring how does it feel to bring in that supportive element? Is it distracting? Is it helpful? Is it not? The second time around, you get to resource yourself, deciding what really works for you. Maybe some shapes you want to leave the support behind. You don't need it. Maybe others you really enjoyed having it. So take this as an approach of curiosity and exploration around support. At the front of your mat, standing in mountain pose, bringing the hands to heart center. We'll shift the weight to the left foot and start to lift the right knee. We'll create a figure four here as we cross right ankle over left knee and gently press the right knee back. There's your figure four. Take a moment just to feel connected standing on one leg. Then we'll start to bend into a bonsai tree as we draw the pelvis back and down, sitting into our seat. Now you could stay quite high in this standing balance, or you could come quite low and even loop the backs of the triceps over the right shin. Keep lengthening the spine, looking forward, soften the face, maybe even smile. And then bring the hands to the bolster, dropping down to a toe squat as you rest that left shin 
Ah, see, that's why we did that in all those sun salutations. And then maybe exploring balance here. Now, this is a pose that for me, I have a very difficult time finding balance. So having this support is allowing me to do something more challenging that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do without it. Bring the hands back to the bolster. Use the power of that left leg. Whoo! Stand up, you got that. Extend the right leg back, warrior three. And then getting a little bit playful here, you're gonna rotate that left, the um, bolster onto the thin edge. Place your head onto the outer edge. And then fingertips could stay down, just having a tripod version of warrior three. Or maybe starting to explore a bind here. And then lowering the hands and lowering that right foot, letting it land at a 45 degree angle pyramid pose. Pull the left hip back, spin the right hip forward, slide the bolster up the left shin and fold in. Feeling a little bit restful after that really challenging warrior three pose. And then lift the head, walk the bolster to the right, feet will naturally follow you, Prasarita Padottanasana, bolster right in the middle, inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, fold forward. Maybe the head finds the bolster to land on. Now for some of you, you might be thinking, well, my head could touch the floor anyways, I don't need the bolster. So maybe this for you is more of an exercise of taking the more easeful path of not always having to go to the edge of your range of ability, but maybe taking a softer path from time to time. Lift the head and the heart. Take the bolster over to the inside of that left foot. Turn the left foot out 45 degrees and then sit down into skater's pose, skandasana. Flexing the right toes so they're pointing up to the ceiling. Hands could stay on the floor or take the left fingertips out wide, reach the right arm up to the ceiling and maybe take a bind here. Maybe it's a half bind like our opening warm up. Maybe it's a full bind interlacing the fingers and leaning back. One full breath here. And then releasing the bind, coming into pigeon pose as we wiggle the left foot over to the right side of the mat, shin in front of the bolster, you come to land. Maybe leaning back for a moment, taking chest expansion, you could reach the arms behind you or interlace and draw the knuckles to the back of the mat. And then folding forward, just taking a couple breaths there. And then walking the hands up and in. I'm going to take my right toes, lift my right knee, and I'm going to step my left leg back. Find a downward facing dog, maybe my forehead resting on the bolster. And then looking to the front of my mat, I'm gonna to start to walk my feet forward. I'll need to grab my bolster, slide it to the front of my mat. Finding Uttanasana, we'll take a half salutation, lift up halfway, fold in. Circle sweep out and up. Let's take that sequence to the second side, shift the weight to the right, lift your left knee. Create that figure four, ankle over knee, left knee pressing back, pause for a breath. As you're ready, start to descend the pelvis back and down. Now remember, you could stay up high. This is still a really valuable balancing pose. If you're wanting to integrate a little bit more you can loop the triceps in front of the shin bone. 
So knowing that these are just different options, there's no hierarchy to them, just kind of where your work is today. And then we'll drop into the toe squat, hands on the bolster, dropping down, shin down. And the right heel is right in the perineum, which really helps kind of establish that centering to be able to access balance. And what I'm noticing is even though I have this element of support underneath me, my body is constantly recalibrating to maintain this balance here. And then bring the hands to the bolster, power up that right leg, you've got this. <laughs> Woo! And push that left leg back, well done. I'm gonna hop back just a tiny bit, turn that bolster up into the narrow edge and bring your forehead down, getting that tripod balance. Now hands could come to the floor or you could start to explore the balance, tricky, tricky. Taking your time. And then letting hands lower. Left, hand, left foot lowers 45 degrees. Now for me, my hips have gotten not squared, so I'm gonna pull my right hip back, left hip forward, take the bolster, bring it in like a nice cushy pillow, and then snuggle in for a few breaths. So I feel this intense stretch in my right leg, and yet there's also this really generous feeling of being held by the bolster. And then we'll start to walk over to the left, place the bolster right in the middle, and again, inhale, lengthen, and fold in. Couple breaths here. And again, if this feels really easy, you know, your yoga practice is allowed to be easy sometimes. It's allowed to feel like a break. And then we'll come into Skandasana, lifting the head and the heart, turn the right toes out, slide that bolster inside the right heel, and then sit on down. Finding that Skandasana, skater pose, left toes lift to the ceiling. And then again, hands could be on the floor, or if you're wanting to explore that opening, right palm down, left arm up. You could stay really expansive here, or take it into either a half or a full bind. One more breath. And then transitioning to Kapotasana Pigeon Pose. The bolster is exactly where we need it. So we'll just let that right foot come over to the left edge of the mat, spin the pelvis around, shin drops right in front, and then taking that chest expansion, either reaching the arms back or interlacing the fingers, knuckles going back. And then starting to fold forward, almost like we did that lizard, sliding the arms out, keeping it pretty active because we are in the more active part of the practice. One more breath here. And then we'll come back to that downward facing dog, walking the hands in. A little bit of a funky transition as we tuck the left toes, swing that right leg around. Maybe the forehead finds the bolster. And then we'll come to the front of the mat, walking the feet forward. Take the bolster, shift it to the front of the mat. Keep walking. Half lift here, tabletop spine. Fold in. Circle sweep. Okay, second round. Do you remember your job here? Your job is to decide how you're going to resource yourself. So same flow, we're gonna go slightly faster, a little bit shorter holds in each shape. You decide when you use this bad boy and when you say, I don't need it. I got this, okay? Standing to the front of the mat, here we go. Hands into heart center, shift the weight to the left foot. Lift that right knee, find your figure four. Take a full inhale here. 
Exhale, sit it down to the degree that you want to go. Inhale there. Exhale, drop down to your toe squat. Maybe find the balance. Maybe you have your bolster, maybe not. Shift back to warrior three, extending the right leg back. Maybe this time you don't want to have the bolster as you explore a bind. One inhale. Lower that right leg. Pyramid pose. Inhale fully. Exhale, drop in. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, Prasarita Padottanasana. Maybe you have the bolster, maybe not. Inhale there. Exhale, transition to Skandasana. Again, maybe you have the bolster, maybe you're leaving it. Choosing what sort of arm variation you're wanting to take here. And then as you exhale, transitioning to Pigeon Pose. I'm going to give you about five to seven breaths to play here in Pigeon Pose. If you're wanting to work towards mermaid or some sort of a bound um, variation, I find that the support really helps with that. So I'm going to bring in that back shin, kind of play how am I feeling about what movement there is there, what space is there for me to work with, and then working to take a bind. If you're going to take the bind, make sure you pull the elbow into the body so as not to strain the shoulder. And then we'll flip. Release. Step back. Downward facing dog for a breath. Lifting the head, walking forward. Migrating the bolster. Half salutation, lift up, half. Fold in. Circle sweep. Palms together, second side, you've got this. Shift the weight to the right leg, figure four. Inhale. Exhale, dropping down to whatever depth you are choosing today. Moving on into your toe squat, maybe with the bolster, maybe not. Warrior three, powering up that standing leg, left leg back. Maybe you're bringing the bolster under the forehead, maybe not. Left foot down, pyramid pose, Parshvottanasana. Maybe you snuggle up against the bolster, maybe not. Knowing that you have access to choice in this practice. Lifting the head, maybe you come bolster in between the legs, folding in. That the agency of choice is always yours. Maybe moving the bolster to the inner right heel, dropping into Skandasana. Perhaps exploring a bind, or maybe staying grounded through the hands as well as the feet. Moving into Kapotasana Pigeon Pose, right foot over to the left side of the mat. Deciding if you're going to explore some form of a bind, maybe mermaid pose, maybe working towards full Ekapadaraja Kapotasana. I'm going to see how that feels in my body today. Staying connected to whatever it is you're choosing to play with.
And then we'll step back, downward facing dog. And then lower to the knees. Make sure this bolster is pretty much where it needs to be. We're gonna place the meat of the belly and the hip points right on the bolster here and come into a supported sphinx pose. So the lower abdomen sort of below the navel and then activate the legs so the kneecaps are lifting away from the mat and the tops of the feet are pushing down. Forearms are down, I want you to push the forearms into the floor. Think of pulling your elbows back towards the bolster and then feel the sternum lifting up and forward. The eyes are open. The energy is up and out. And then building from here, take the hands, widen them the width of the mat and start to press up into seal pose lifting the elbows. Now, if you notice any compression comes into the low back there, then take the tailbone and extend it towards the heels. It's subtle, but it will decompress that low back lumbar area. Lift the navel slightly, and then think of rolling the shoulders onto the back. So I'll do that again for you. Roll the shoulders, there we go. Lift the chin slightly, seal pose. One more inhale. And then exhale, let the knees soften. Come down to the forearms, widen your elbows, and then rest for a couple breaths right here. And you may notice that the bolster is providing some feedback on the breath. So you notice the belly pressing into the bolster on the inhale. And then the bolster pressing back up and into the belly on the exhale. So there's this feedback loop happening. One more back bend here. Let's start to lift back up. Now, you could repeat the sphinx or the seal like we just did. So you activate the legs, either coming to forearms or up onto the palms, or we're gonna work with Dhanurasana. So bend the knees. Lift the shins. Take your left hand to the middle of the mat. Take your right hand around and find the right foot. And then making sure you're not going to capsize forward, which we don't want to happen. We want to see if we can lift the left hand, find the left foot, and then here's the key. Push the feet into the hands to lift the torso. And then you're like the mermaid at the front of the ship. Smile. One more big, beautiful breath. And then gently release with control. Press the palms into the mat, shift up to all fours, and take a couple of cat and cows really gingerly here. That was some pretty intense backbending work between our pigeon pose and then that sequence of three backbends. Beautifully done. And then coming to bring your hips into the center of the mat, bolster out in front of you. Place your feet on the mat, knees bent. Rotate the bolster to that medium height and then snuggle the bolster in between the legs and gently squeeze the bolster so the legs are engaged here. Reach the arms up tall. Take your right hand to your left knee, left hand behind you and twist around. And you might even peek, have the knees shifted to one direction or the other. Try to keep them really neutral as you hold that bolster in place. And then looking forward, unwind the twist, flex the feet, slide them out straight. Inhale, lengthen the arms up. Now, depending on how far you fold, you might need to move this bolster to fold. And then lifting the head, we'll take the twist on the second side. So turning it back in if you needed to move it. Bend those knees. 
feet down, a little squeezy squeeze, reach those arms up, left hand to right knee, right arm behind you, and twist it out. Noticing that sometimes what support does, similar to what it might be doing right now, is it, it makes you aware of where you are and what you're working on. It gives you something measurable to sense where your work is. Coming out and extending the legs, take the bolster behind you as we prepare for our inversion. So the primary practice for our inversion today is actually gonna be halasana, plow pose. And some of you might be able to naturally reach the feet and the shins to the mat. But for me, I find it's, even though I can do that, it feels yummy to have this as a place to land for my legs. So placing it overhead and behind you, lengthen the legs, and then controlling the core, go ahead and come on down. Oop, shimmy, shimmy. Bring the arms alongside you, bend those knees. And we'll first come into about a 30 second Sarvangasana shoulder stand. So knees come into the body, and then controlling with that momentum, swing the legs up and over. Bring the hands to the low back for support and lift up. Now, this is not a pose where it's advised to particularly talk a lot. So I'm primarily going to give you silence here. We'll start to shift into halasana by starting to draw the legs overhead, letting them land on the bolster, bending the knees and allowing a softer quality to come into the body. Maybe even releasing the arms, allowing the spine to sort of round Tuning into the breath. Decompressing the spine. And then with control, using the hands like brakes, begin to roll down one vertebra at a time. When you arrive, bend the knees into the chest, grab your bolster, lift it up. Place it in between the thighs and then drop the knees over to the right spinal twist. And then engaging the core just enough, lift the legs, sweep them over to the left spinal twist. And then if you'd like to, you can use the bolster for Shavasana, placing it either underneath the knees to release the low back, or some prefer it underneath the spine. As you settle into a position of stillness with the body, becoming aware that the breath is still there and the body is still breathing. Becoming a witness to the breath. And shifting the awareness to the mind and if there are any thoughts in the mind, just allowing them to float past like clouds in front of a blue sky. Becoming a witness to the mind. And 
finally becoming aware of the peace that you're experiencing. Knowing that you are not your physical body, you are not the thoughts in your mind, but you are this peace. And it is always within you. Without moving, allow deep and conscious breath to re-enter the body. And as the breath deepens, allow subtle movement to enter through the fingers and toes, wrists and ankles. Extending the arms overhead for a full body stretch. And then coming back up to a comfortable seat. So as this practice draws to a close, taking a brief moment to pause and appreciate all of the people, the systems, the elements of support in our lives and also pausing to recognize our own agency, our own access to choice in learning how to be better resource ourselves with support. Please bring the palms of the hands together as we seal this practice with the closing shlokas of the integral yoga lineage, I will repeat the English afterwards so that you know what they mean. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu, which means in English, may the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. And may that light of truth overcome all darkness. Victory to that light. Jai Shri Sakurum Rajki. Jai.